Okay, let's talk about the MTLE, middle level, and that would be grades five through eight math exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're preparing for this particular exam. And of course, that would mean that you're looking to be a middle school math teacher in the great state of Minnesota. So uh, welcome to the video. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a uh, middle and high school math teacher, but I've uh, really been involved in online education for many, many years. And uh, along with that, I've constructed uh, a lot of different online math solutions, a lot of courses, um, several, several courses actually, of uh, basically um, you know, middle level, high school level math, um, and a lot of test preparation type courses as well. I actually want to let you know that I do have an MTLE middle level um, math prep course uh, that I think that you'll find extremely comprehensive. If you're interested in that, I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video. But um, uh, basically what I have here is kind of a little pop quiz, uh, certainly a type of problem that you uh, should be able to pretty easily be able to solve if you expect to do well on this particular exam. Now, a little bit about the middle level, I think, um, unless if, uh, you know, hopefully you've already looked at what kind of math you need to know to, to do well on the MTLA middle level uh, math exam, but it's a considerable amount of high school level math, pretty advanced kind of stuff. So it's not just like pre-algebra or kind of middle level sixth, seventh grade type of basic stuff. So you really do need to kind of uh, bring your A game, if you will, in terms of uh, uh, your math skills. And that the only way you're going to, you know, have that um, available to it during this test is to study hard. Okay. So even if you're strong in math, uh, if you've been away from math for a long time, you need to really study for it. And you know, um, obviously, if you're looking to teach um, uh, middle school math, well, you know, you're really going to have to have a strong command of high school level math. Because if you think about it, in, in middle school, when I've taught middle school and high school, you certainly can be teaching, um, you know, obviously, you'll pr most definitely be teaching like pre algebra um, during the course of your uh, career, uh, middle school. But you could definitely might be teaching algebra one or even like, say, honors geometry. Okay, these are all type of courses that are taught uh, in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, primarily like in the 8th grade for these courses. But, you know, you can definitely be teaching some pretty advanced uh, concepts. So along with that, let's take a look at an algebra problem. Let me tell you uh, the problem here, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to solve it. And then, of course, I'm going to solve it. So here I have a uh, little graph. Okay, and I have some sort of, of uh, graph on this xy plane. Okay, here's five. I'd like you to uh, write or find the equation to this function. All right, so I'll just kind of leave it like that. So find the equation to this function. Now, this is a sketch of a particular graph. Hopefully, um, you're kind of getting my drift. If you're like, okay, I think I know where he's going for, because this is, again, kind of a classic algebra problem. I don't want to give you too many clues because I want to give you an opportunity to solve this and then we'll talk more about it here in a second. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you were, you were able to solve this. If you weren't, no big deal. Just kind of use it as feedback in terms of what you need to study. Again, um, even if you're able to get this right, that's by no means enough, you know, like uh, feedback. Oh, I'm all ready for this particular exam. Again, there's a, there's a lot of, of algebra uh, on this exam, algebra, geometry, amongst other topics, but this is definitely something that uh, you should have gotten correct. But yeah, if you didn't get it right the first time, I'm sure you'll you'll be able to do this type of problem, no sweat on the actual exam. Okay, what are we dealing with here? Well, I'll try to draw a nice little parabola. Okay, it's a sketch. Okay, so hopefully if you kind of see what's going on there, we're kind of talking about quadratic equations. So this is a quadratic function. It's a parabola. Okay, and if you recall, let me see if I can use a different color here. If you have a parabola that, cro uh, that crosses through the x-axis at two points here, you have two real roots. Okay, so this point and this point would be the solutions to that quadratic um, equation. Okay, so if you're like, okay, I think I remember what you're talking about, that's good. Now, likewise, if... Um, I have a quadratic equation, let's say it goes like this, 
some sort of parabola. Remember quadratic equations, when you graph them, take the form, the shape of a parabola. So they can be either up like so or downwards, okay? And they can be anywhere on the x, y axis. So if you have a parabola like so, okay, what's going on here? Well, it's not crossing the x axis at all. So this means that this particular quadratic equation has imaginary, okay, or complex roots, all right? And here, we would have two real number roots. Okay, so here we have two real number roots. They're located here and here, our two real uh, number solutions. This does not cross the x-axis, so it has no real roots. So it has two imaginary roots. Now, why do I say all that? Well, if you remember that, let me get rid of this stuff. Now we can kind of address this particular graph. Okay, so what's this graph telling me? Well, this graph here is representing a parabola that's bouncing off the x-axis at 5, okay? So this is what we call a double root, okay? So here we have actually two roots. Remember a quadratic equation, uh, which looks like a parabola when you're graphing, um, or is a parabola when we graph it, will always have two solutions. Now here it's bouncing at 5, so this has a double root, okay? So you should be familiar with that. Quadratic equations are going to have either a double root, here, I'll just abbreviate it, a double root. They'll have two real roots, okay? This is actually, a uh, double root is also two real roots, but it's a kind of a, a kind of a um, particular type of double root, right? So it's the same number, five and five, for example. Uh, and then you can also have um, two complex or imaginary, um, or two imaginary roots. It's a better way to state that. Now, Again, I can kind of go into, I can do a complete, we'd be here for a long time just to talk about quadratic equations, but this kind of goes to the topic of the discriminant, which is a part of the quadratic uh, formula. Again, topics that you're definitely going to um, uh, have to know super well, not only for this exam, but you're going to be teaching this stuff, okay? Uh, well, likely, it depends. I mean, you might be just teaching more like, say, sixth grade. It all depends what you're going to be teaching in middle school, but you have to be prepared. If you're going to be hired as a middle school math teacher, you know, your uh, department head or your principal might be like, hey, this year you're going to be teaching, you know, um, honors algebra one. Well, if you're going to be teaching honors algebra one, you're going to definitely be teaching all of this. So you got to be prepared for it. So back to our problem. So here we have a double root at five. So what we want to be thinking about is linear factors, okay? So this looks this way. This is x minus five times x minus five equals zero. Now hopefully this kind of strikes a bell. Um, again, I can't be like turning this video into a full lesson on linear factors and polynomial equations because it would just go too long. But if I had two factors, x minus 5 and x minus 5 equals 0, we can use that zero product property, right? I have something times something else that's equal to 0. So one of the ways we love to solve um, equations is to factor them and then set each factor equal to 0. So here, x minus 5 equal to 0 and x minus 5 is equal to 0. We're setting both of these uh, linear factors equal to 0. I get x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 5, okay? so these are two unique roots of the same number, but again, uh, this is one solution and this is the other solution because we're talking about a quadratic equation. So there's two solutions. They just happen to be the same number, so we call those a double root. But here's the linear factors here. So knowing that, I can just go ahead and find this function by just multiplying x minus 5 times x minus 5. Let's multiply these guys together using the FOIL technique. I'm going to get x squared. This gives me here first outer inner last, right? So minus 5x minus 5x and then minus 5 times minus 5 is going to be plus 25. So this is going to be x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. So this is the quadratic equation, all right? This is the quadratic equation, but if I made this into a function or represented it, this equation as a function, I would just put a y in front of that or an f of x. Okay, I could have made your life a little bit more challenging. I could have gave you this problem. This is a nice little problem for you. I could have gave you this same graph with this 5, and I could have said, hey, find f of negative um, 3. 
Okay, what's f of negative 3 given this graph? That's definitely a type of problem that you should be able to kind of uh, be prepared for uh, for the MTLE middle level grades 5 through 8 uh, math exam. So anyways, um, hopefully you kind of, well, you know, went down memory lane with your high school algebra. You know, if you're going to be teaching middle level math, obviously you have one an aptitude for math or a passion for it. you might be like myself you, you very well could have a degree in math or an engineering background or, or something along those lines clearly you're you're intelligent and you have a strong math back background probably taken well beyond calculus so that's fantastic but i can tell you from personal experience that uh, you know all the differential equations and advanced calculus all that stuff you almost have to kind of put that aside in your brain. Let me give you a little bit of, well, this is my own personal experience. All right, so let's look at, let's say you, you're you're going to be teaching math. You have all this super advanced stuff, which is great to know, okay? Advanced calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, you know, abstract algebra. Guess what? You're going to have to kind of table that for a second because when you're you're in the land of high school and middle school level math you have to kind of you know be thinking about mastering this domain of mathematics and how do you translate that to 12 13 14 year old students okay so this is great all right definitely it's uh, advantageous you know the smarter you are in mathematics but it's not different you know it's not like directly beneficial to your 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 day-to-day -day interactions with you know 11 or 12 year old students okay when you're trying to teach them you know fractions and whatnot so why do I say all this is uh, don't go in you know when you're thinking about the material you need to know just because you have a strong Mac math background what you want to do is really start committing yourself to mastering the fundamentals, okay? And and trust me, even myself, the way I feel about it is that I'm continuously learning, even like basic math, like place value and different strategies to think about multiplication and, and different approaches and just really becoming a student uh, and, because you're going to always learn from somebody else. Like how do you teach these things? And so it's going to make you a better teacher overall. But again, hopefully you kind of had uh, fun with this video uh, for those of you who like math. Uh, but let me go ahead and leave you with a couple of things here. Again, if you want to check out my test prep course, uh, um, I'm going to leave the link uh, to that again in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for like 12 plus years uh, as the time of this particular video. Um, I just recently crossed over 100,000 subscribers, so thank you very much out there. Um, I think I'm at like around 126,000 and 13 million plus views. I say that because, um, one, well, yes, I'm, I'm, I am uh, proud of that, but it's taken many, many years. But I, my intention wasn't to like, you know, go out and get like a certain level of subscribers. That's not why I made these videos because you don't stay on a platform for over a decade. The reason why I do these videos is because I love to teach math. Okay. And if you're going to be a math teacher, <laughs> you got to make sure that you like to teach math. So, uh, but if you like my teaching style, okay. Um, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that can definitely help you out and prepare. So hopefully you'll check that out. But if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what's your background? Just out of curiosity, uh, some uh, people that you know, are going to teaching, you know, middle school, high school, they have some like amazing um, professional backgrounds. Some people are coming in that were like PhDs and, you know, engineering and they decide they want a career change or others, you know, have a master's degree. I mean, just like some amazing, highly educated people that are in, in our classrooms at all levels. So just kind of curious what your particular background uh, is. And also, are you um, considering maybe uh, teaching high school math one day? I kind of be interested in, in uh, uh kind of seeing what you think. I actually started in high school mathematics, which was uh, awesome. Then I was kind of curious about what it would like to be, teach middle school, so I taught middle school. And there's a huge difference when you're teaching the sixth grader to an 18-year-old 12th grader, you know, that's you know, like going to be taking AP classes or whatnot. So it was a massive spectrum, but it, each grade has their own unique. That's one thing I kind of learned as a teacher. Sixth grade is different than seventh grade. Seventh grade is different than eighth grade. Like, you know, you, these are only things that you really uh, discover when you actually teach real life students. So 
Um, with that being said, I definitely want to uh, wish you all the best uh, in your preparation and your exam, um, on your exam and in your education career. I mean, we definitely need great teachers uh, out there, so I'm sure you'll be uh, one of those folks that parents will be lucky to send their kids to. So keep working hard. Um, thank you for your time, and have a great day.